Hello, Dr. Croker here, and this is the story of Betnik from the Elder Scrolls Online. This is the second part of the Daggerfall Covenant storyline. Previously in Strosmakai, after pulling off a small heist, you and Captain Kaleen escaped to Betnik to try and gain allies for the Covenant. That's what brings us to Betnik. As you get off the boat, you talk to an orc named Gruluk, who says you're only welcome here because you arrived with Kaleen. He says that Bloodthorn cultists just attacked the fort, and if you want more info, you'll have to speak with Lamber. You find Lamber at the fort. The Bloodthorn cult assaulted the fortress. They were repulsed, but they stole a Breton scroll the orcs found here long ago. Chief Tazgol thinks the attack failed, but I'm not so sure. She thinks the scroll was the only reason they came. She mentions three places where cultists have been sighted and suggests you check them out. At one location called Moriselli, an orc witness says the dead are restless here and that Naramo is in the area looking into it. Ah, my old friend. Couldn't resist another exploration? Be mindful. This one may be a touch more dangerous. Foul necromancy is at work here. He says the Iliads, which are ancient elves, fascinate him as much as the dwarves, but right now it's time to focus on the restless orc spirits. He suggests investigating the catacombs, which he unseals for you. A proper application of magic to these stones, and the way is open. Inside, you speak with the spirit of a warcaller who tells you the cult has violated their tomb. He says he has a magic warhorn that his soldiers obey, and the cult leader priestess Drusilla has stolen it to bind the warriors to her will. You offer to kill her and get it back. You return to the Warcaller, and he says the warrior spirits are still tormented until you return the Warhorn to his tomb. He tells you the cult is after an Iliad ruin called Karzog's Demise, then you proceed to return the horn. Your efforts honor us, champion. You leave Moriselli for the next of the three places where cultists were sighted, Carved Hills. Here, a shaman named Laganak tells you the cult is performing dark rituals, and she tells you of a way you may gain insight as to what they're up to. By the bridge to the south is a totem. Those who touch it see visions. It may show you a vision that links the attack to the rituals I feel corrupting the island. Follow wherever the vision leads you. An image of a man appears and you follow it. He meets with a woman and you witness their conversation. You have the scroll. Rejoice that you did not fail. Varden will be pleased. I live to serve my masters. Go west to the Aeliad site. The scroll's ritual should enable you to succeed where the others fail. I will not fail you, mistress. You run to the Aeliad site mentioned and witness another image. In the name of the Bloodthorns, enter the Spirit Realm! Failure again. Perhaps an ancient curse lingers here. I will try the ritual in our lair. You find the Bloodthorn lair and enter it. <sighs> At the center, you witness another scene can enter the spirit realm. The next phase of our mission can begin. You return to the shaman Laganak and tell her the cult has entered the spirit realm. The dangers that face us become clearer. I will try to convince Chief Tazgol of this, though I doubt he will accept the word of an outsider. Your efforts on our behalf bring you honor. You leave Carved Hills to head for the third sighting location. At this location, called Grimfield, an orc named Rozag says the cult is raising Breton zombies and he's waiting for Warchief Tazgul to proceed. He doesn't stop you from charging in though, so you head in. Inside a crypt at Grimfield, a Breton spirit asks you to stop the necromancers. Take the Staff of Arche, a potent weapon against undead. 
You must first charge the staff, then use it to destroy the foul abominations summoned by these necromancers. Well now, what have we here? As you take the staff, crafty Larissa appears. Out for a stroll? Enjoying the scenery? She says she's killed a few necromancers and made a disguise for you. You thank her and put it on. You then charge the staff using energy motes near the cult ritual sites. You then use the powered staff to face the three abominations mentioned by the Breton spirit. Then you return to her. The cult focused all their power into their abominations. Now these are dust and ash. The threat to us is ended, but the threat to you remains. King Redmwick wishes to repay our debt to you. Speak to him. Learn your true peril. The king thanks you, then gives you some history of this island. The Seamount Orcs attacked generations ago. They took our island. Under their rule, what we called Betany became Betnik. My failure to defend my people was unforgivable. But how I attempted to defeat the orcs was worse. He says he used an ancient relic, which the Bloodthorn cult now seeks, then opens a portal where you can witness his last day from the orcs' perspective. As an orc, you witness this historic day. Targoth! The Breton king has sealed himself deeper in the ruin. He is preparing some foul spell. She says we need to interrogate the Breton prisoners to figure out how to reach their king. She says the spell will kill everyone, and if they absolutely must, they will take extreme measures. She gives you a charm that can be used to compel enemy spirits to answer your questions. You try interrogating the queen directly, but get nowhere. Please, you have her no, executed so you can compel her spirit to talk. Even in death you torment me. Ask and be done with it. She then reveals rune stones that will open the door to where her husband, the king, is. You approach the war chief with this information, and he says he will give the king a chance to surrender, but will kill him if he refuses. You activate the rune stones and enter the chamber. Renwick, surrender now, and I'll spare your worthless life. Stay back! I hold destruction in my hands. Magic cannot save you. Surrender or die. Leave now, or I'll use this relic to obliterate you. You will not harm my people. Draw steel. Help me. Help me, damn you all. Targoth, bury this elf-loving fool. Once Renwick is killed, you return to the present and speak with King Renwick's spirit. He tells you the relic craves souls and the Bloodthorn are looking for it. Unfortunately, he doesn't remember exactly where it's hidden, but says you must find it before the Bloodthorn get to it. As soon as you finish talking to the king, a messenger arrives saying you're needed at the fort ASAP. Glad I found you. I've got news. She says Chief Tazgul is leading an attack on Karzog's demise to kill the cultists. You're back. Good. Do you know what this cult is planning? You tell Lambert what you've learned about the cult's plans. The two of you realize that the Iliad relic must be at Karzog's demise, and the Bloodthorn cult will be using it against the chief. The two of you race to the ruins and find that the cult has already raised a spectral army. Naramo speaks with you there. Find a way into the, the ruins. The orcs are being routed by a spirit army. The Bloodthorns have tapped into a power I've never seen before. Naramo tells you to activate three doorway crystals so that you may enter. As you do, you find that the Iliad spirits are angry, but when you tell them you're not on the cultist's side, they agree to help you get inside. Inside, you find crafty Larissa, who now offers you a cultist disguise.
eventually you reach the inner sanctuary. Naramo tells you that a cultist named Vardan is in the spirit realm commanding the spirits which attack the orcs, but now they've sealed the portal so that Vardan is trapped there. Without the Breton ritual Vardan used, only one without a soul can cross the portal. That means you. You must activate the Welkin Stone, enter the spirit realm, and kill Vardan. What's the plan? You're too late. My army feeds. Back among the living, you are faced with a tough choice. Lamber wants to destroy the relic once and for all, and she says it may even be used against them one day. Captain Colleen wants to take the relic and use it to benefit the Covenant. You approach the relic and decide to banish it forever. This, of course, causes opposite reactions from the two sides. You've betrayed me and the Covenant with your actions. I can't stand to be in your company anymore. You'll leave here without me. The relic is gone, and my people's souls are at rest. I thank you for your choice. You return to the fort and speak with Chief Tazgul. He's thankful that you've destroyed the relic. So thankful, in fact, that he now wishes to join the Daggerfall Covenant. He asks you to travel to Glenumbra to give Sir Lunis his petition to join and has arranged passage for you. You find Sir Lunis and tell him. The Seamount War Chief? Impressive. I don't know what you did to convince him, friend. But you have my gratitude. Well done. I will take this petition to High King Emmerich immediately. Enjoy your stay in Daggerfall. And that concludes the story of Betnik. I hope you've enjoyed watching. Stay tuned for the next video in this series, Glenumbra.